Hello, this is San Diego magician Tom Interval. Welcome to another Interval of Magic. It's Thursday, June 13th, 2019, and this is blogcast number nine. Harry Houdini. Notice I said Houdini, not Houdini. That's not a mistake. It's spelled H-A-U-D-Y-N-I. Harry Houdini was an escape artist, a German imitator of Houdini, who performed in the early 1900s to at least the late 1920s. In the U.S., some might pronounce Houdini as Houdini because of the Y, as in dynamite. But in Germany, it would probably be pronounced Houdini. Now, I couldn't find much information on Houdini except the information in the blog I'm about to read. I originally published this blog a few days ago on June 10th, 2019. Now, again, these blogcasts are for those who would rather listen or watch than read. Although, if you're listening to this on SoundCloud or on some other audio-only platform, then you'll miss the cool 1929 video of Houdini getting out of a straitjacket while hanging upside down. Houdini, a German Houdini imitator, by Tom Interval. If television existed in the 1920s, and it aired the game show To Tell the Truth, producers could have invited many more than two contestants pretending to be Houdini. Host. Will a real Harry Houdini please stand up? All the contestants stand up. Host. Wait, there's only one real Houdini. Why are all of you standing? Please sit down, Houdini. You too, Houdini. And and who are you fellas? Houdini? Aldini? Baldini? Or Odini Bodini, Houdin, Hordin, and ladies, Miss Lincoln Houdini, Miss Udina, please have a seat, all of you. German contestant. Ich bin der Harry Houdini. Host. I'm sorry, I don't speak German. Uh, what was that, sir? German contestant. I am the Harry Houdini. Host. You are the Harry Houdini, as in Houdini, H-A-U-D-Y-N-I. Uh, that's not how you say or spell Houdini. Listen, sir, I appreciate the German, because Houdini and his family spoke that language, too, but you're not the real Harry Houdini, either. You're just another imitator. German contestant. Tat wäre wel mai be. Wat mir upside down streitjacke des Kappe is just as spectacular as Houdini's. Wait, you say your upside down straitjacket escape is just as spectacular as Houdini's? I'm not sure about that. Aside from this fictional dialogue, Harry Houdini was a real person, one of scores of people imitating Houdini during and after the real Houdini's life. While Houdini despised some of his imitators, he tolerated the rest and sometimes quipped about how many there were. I'll wager that if you throw a stone in the air, it will fall down and hit someone who has a handcuff key in his pocket and a handcuff king idea in his head he wrote in his Notes from Houdini column, published in the New York Dramatic Mirror on June 17, 1905. I don't know if Houdini considered himself a handcuff king, but as upside-down straitjacket escapes go, his version was pretty good. How do I know? There's a 35mm film of him performing the stunt. Movie Tone News captured the action at a fair, possibly Wurstmarket or Wurstmarket, in Bad Durkheim, Germany, on September 8, 1929. My fiancé discovered the clip while watching miscellaneous old films on YouTube. Copyrights to the full nine-minute video, which also features scenes of a marching band, a procession of fairgoers, and a swarming midway, belong to the University of South Carolina. The folks at the university's Moving Image Research Collections, MIRC, granted me permission to post the following clip of Houdini. Ja, 
After watching this video, I dug a bit deeper but soon discovered there is very little information out there about Houdini. His real name is a mystery, at least to me, and I came up short trying to find biographical data on him. Even so, there were a few small gemstones. The September 1942 issue of Genie, page 17, features a photo of a man identified as Harry Houdini, with a caption that reads, Aus Breaker Koni et Fessel Lunx Kunstler, Schönes, Modell which translates to English as Breakaway King, Escape Artist, Nice Model. Above the photo, owned at the time by magician and carny Edward Saint, is the headline, Hitler Disgruntled Magician? Below it, the unidentified author jokes about Houdini's resemblance to Adolf Hitler. Is it possible that Hitler's hate for and persecution of members of Houdini's creed is partly born of Adolf's failure as an escape artist? Anyhow, the gent in the picture tried to cash in on Houdini's fame when the latter was playing Germany back about 1909 or thereabouts. We have been told that Hitler was vitally interested in magic at that time. Study the features well. Is it Schickelgruber? And won't it be swell when the day comes when he cannot escape? Let's speed the time and buy more war stamps and bonds. One thing about this genie blurb that stands out, besides the anti-Hitler humor, is that the author claims Houdini performed as early as 1909 or thereabouts. The movie tone clip was filmed 20 years later, so assuming Houdini was in his 20s or 30s in 1909, he would have been in his 40s or 50s in 1929. Was he really that agile through middle age? I have to wonder because the Houdini in the genie photo looks different from the Houdini in the movie tone film. Is the latter just an aged Houdini? His hair looks lighter and thinner, possibly gray, and his mustache-free face looks structurally different from the guy pictured in Genie. What do you think? Fourteen years after the Genie article was published, Houdini's name appeared again, this time in a column in Hugard's Magic Monthly, October 1956, page 488. The author, Milburn Christopher, writes the following. Just today I bought the October issue of a new magazine, True Strange. In it was an article, The Great Houdini's Last Escape. The author is Dr. W.D. Chesney. It is profusely illustrated. A card carrying three photographs, and the name Harry Houdini is identified as a very young Houdini in the good old days, freeing himself of simple basic tricks with chains and ropes. How Houdini would have roared had he seen this. Houdini, who is shown with a mustache, was one of his German imitators. Ed Dart once gave me one of Houdini's cards and commented how much he resembled Hitler in appearance. I don't have the October 1956 issue of True Strange, so if anyone reading this or listening to this has the article, I'd love to see it or the republished version in Adventure for Men, June 1971. I'd also like to dig up more info about Houdini and see a copy of the business card Christopher mentioned in Hugard's. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this footage. To watch the MIRC video in its entirety, go to https colon slash slash mirc.sc.edu slash island ORA slash object slash USC colon two nine two five three. Thanks for watching and or listening to this interval of magic. If you enjoyed it and want to see more like it, along with a variety of other great magic related content, please help support my work by becoming a Patreon patron at www.patreon.com slash Tom Interval. Also, please like and share this, subscribe to my Interval Magic YouTube channel, and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at Interval Magic. Until then, may your intervals be happy, peaceful, and magical.